All right, what's up, crossover family? Uh, this is Pastor Christopher. This is Pastor Tommy. What's up? What's up? This is uh, this is not this is not recorded. This is real time. We are in front of the church, as you can see. We're in front of the church, and uh, right here on Fowler Avenue. If y'all were paying attention and have been paying attention, y'all come on in. Share this video right now. Share this video with some folks. Uh, this is real time. It is uh, 11:04. Sunday morning and uh, we're here uh, we're gonna be on here for just a little bit we're gonna process the message the sermon today the scriptures we're gonna process a little bit about what's happening in our nation um, literally every major city in the United States has protest and had protests going on last night and so uh, so yeah so we're gonna we're gonna be on here for a little bit just kind of talking it through and uh, it's gonna get probably real a little raw um, We've got uh, we've got some uh, other folks that are going to probably jump jump in here with us. Our our uh, one of our elected officials may may join us uh, this morning. So y'all share this video, please. If y'all if y'all have never shared before, share this video. Tag some people. Tell everybody. Text everybody. You know that's part of crossover. Tell them to get on the Facebook page right now because we got we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to work through. And uh, you know the amazing the amazing thing about God. Pastor Tommy, two two months ago, was it? You and I were on the phone and just kind of praying and thinking through, like, what are we going? What's the next series? Yeah. And we end up saying, like, man, let's let's do the Book of James, and we prayed about it and planned count it all joy. Yep. That's what it started off with. That yep. count it all we joy. Saying, yeah, count it all joy, and I want to do something around counting because everybody's counting all this stuff right now. You know, the death toll, the unemployment rate, the infection rate. They're counting their finances, their feelings, their freedoms. People counting on. You know, the government counting on the CDC, counting on just all kinds of whatever. And uh, we just felt like, man, we want to talk about it and have a conversation and go through the book of James chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And uh, we've done this so many times before when we were in planning meetings, praying for sermons. And many times we planned way out in advance, like the a year. year. <laughs> right? But honestly, our year has been totally smashed now with the pandemic and everything else. So the series since this all the pandemic started um it's looked quite a bit different and so uh yeah so we did chapter one last week and talked about your testing counts that's james chapter one you know count it all joy when you have testing when you have trials when you have tribulations god is is building you up there's going to be some good that's going to come out of it uh but chapter two that's what we were on this week anyways and look at how god lined it up because it's about prejudice that's what we were preaching on anyways, and it just, it fit in perfectly. So we love it when, when God shows up yeah. and does it like that. Yeah. And, um, and and so we're live today because uh, probably a lot of you guys watching uh, know that the news last night, uh, Fowler Avenue, which is the street that our church is located on, really was the epicenter of the protest in Tampa uh, last night. There was a protest downtown yesterday. The, the, the one up here in this uptown area of Tampa was uh, down near Temple Terrace. It kind of looped around by Bush Gardens and then it kind of got a little violent at 30th uh, and Bush. And then it kind of came up um, Bush to Fowler. And then that's where it got real crazy last so, night. So I think we want to note, though, for anybody that's watching this and I know, I mean, the news could grab this or whatever. We are clear that the protesters were peaceful yesterday. Yes. We're, we're clear that, that, that the protest, the mayor, several other yeah. elected officials were, were out with the protest the yesterday day, morning. The daytime protesters. You know, and, and last night, um, you know, there were some other individuals that got involved and, uh, you know, things sort of uh, got got out of hand from there. So you want to jump in the truck in the truck and let's, let's ride yeah, down? Yeah, I, I do want to say this really quick, though, because we're here at the church. The reason we wanted to start here is because, of course, our phones, our emails, our texts were blowing up about the church because i mean literally a block away from here there was buildings burning on fire uh our direct neighbor uh phantom fireworks was looted uh around two o'clock in the morning i got the phone call and um so it's we didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night uh but want to just report to you guys we're grateful that um god protected our building yeah um it was untouched i think at the same time a lot of people in our city they they know who we are they know what we do they know what we're about and we love our city we serve our city uh in so many different ways one of our members just said that they were out at the protest yesterday yeah 
so anyway so so just wanted to give you that 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 word um i know many people were that's a b <laughs> many people were worried uh about the church building and the church building is is fine and uh but but we want to see how we can help rebuild our neighborhood and help rebuild uh people's lives and confront this injustice that's that, that's happening uh, yeah. in our country and in our world so we're going to take a little drive yeah listen y'all this is real time y'all stay with us this is like real tv we're going to literally get in the truck and uh, i'm getting in the truck right now uh and uh we're going we're going to drive for a minute sorry for the close-up there y'all saw saw all my nostrils and all that kind of jazz but this is real tv y'all stay with us uh this is the reality of being able to uh do technology and all of this kind of jazz so we're literally going to get in the car because we're going to show you guys a couple things we're going to talk a little bit and um going to pray a little bit too um uh, let me let me just say um you know it's we're in a real tension guys and anybody that are with you guys the my, my phone was picking up the wi-fi uh y'all y'all tag other people on but uh we, we we we're in a real tension guys um if if this issue were an easy fix, it would have already been fixed. And anybody that would uh, just point fingers at one group of people um, or one context of people is totally misguided. Um, it is amazing because for a couple of years, even on Wednesday night, Golden Diamond Store. All right. Diamonds. Sorry, guys. I think. Uh, I thought we think we lost some uh, lost some uh, connection there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the camera around really fast so that you guys can see where we are. Y'all can see that we are on Fowler right here, and uh, traffic is backed up a little bit because um, people Every are literally driving through looking at what's happening. Yep, everybody's looking at the fire. Where where? So y'all are getting ready to see in a moment. So the the is that parking lot blocked off over there? Uh, I don't know. No, just the just the yeah. just the uh, gas station. So they blocked the gas station off. So everybody that's been to our church, you know where we are. We're on Fowler Avenue, literally driving uh, here. You're gonna see here in just a minute. Um, Y'all stay with us. If if the internet connection freezes up or something like that, don't don't jump off. Jump back on. Uh, stay with us. So y'all can see here. parking here. Okay. So Pastor, Pastor Tommy is telling us to park in here. So we're gonna, oh, wow. let's see. So you can see right right over there, uh, Saigon, right Bay. there, uh, the Saigon Bay and the Champs. We're gonna we're gonna actually get out in just a minute, guys. So stay with us, everybody. This is this is real time right here. They're probably not gonna let us park in front of that. So let's. I'm gonna park right here. Park right here. All right, y'all stay with us. Give us just a minute. Give stay us just a minute. Stay right with us. Right now. All right. So we're gonna walk you with me, Pastor. The Pastor Tommy, right there. All right. So. We're gonna walk, y'all can see right here, we're on Fowler Avenue. Uh, let's see, across the street right here, the Sun, the Sun Trust, uh, KFC. Some of y'all been eating the KFC too much. Uh, Panda Express, I'm trying to throw a joke in there because yeah. listen, it's uh, yeah. tough times. This is heavy stuff. Yeah, so the fire, y'all can you can you can actually smell it a little bit. I know y'all can't smell it because you're on video, but y'all stay with us here just for a moment. Stay with us for just a moment. Don't hang up. All right, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. So you got the Sa Saigon Vietnamese restaurant right there. We can probably walk over a little bit closer. Uh, the champs right there on the corner. Hopefully y'all can see that. Fire department is still here. Police department is still here. So this is the AT&T right here that uh, was actually, it was crazy because they showed that AT&T on CNN last night. 
So you can see some of the other businesses over here that are boarding up over here. Um, Badar's Hair and All, the Army uh, Career Center. So you can see the fire department, first responders over there navigating everything. So this is, uh, this is real time, guys, real time. So let me turn the camera around because I want to talk just for a moment. Um, and share some things with you guys really fast. Just so, you know, Pastor, the, the irony or the interesting thing about all of this is that people are, are I, I don't know that there's any pastor, any leader, faith leader at least, that wouldn't condemn the violence and the protesting. Like, I don't know anybody that would not do yeah. that. Yeah. But I think, I think it's important, guys, for us as a church to understand the context um, the context of the protest. We're not advocating it. We're not encouraging it. We're discouraging it. We're pushing back on it. Uh, but the irony of it is, is that people are tired. Uh, people are weary. Um, you know, most of us that are on this live now, most of the people that are on our church, if you think about it, we have the tools. Please hear me. We have the tools for a moment. We have the tools to navigate pressure situations. We got family members, we got friends, we got loved ones that reach out to us, that love on us. We got the word of God as our foundation. Um, and um, somebody just texted me, okay, I, got, I see that, yeah. So it's not, not the protest, it's the looting. There's a difference between the protest and the looting. Yeah. Um, there's a difference between the protesting and the looting. Um, and so, um, we have the tools. Everybody doesn't have the tools to navigate anger, to navigate grief. Um, everybody doesn't have the tools to navigate what to do in hopeless situations. And I think it's important for us to also recognize that a part of the, the frustration for people is this. And I shared this with our leaders this morning, our volunteers and activators one of the things that's really frustrating for me is that while the police officer who murdered that young man is in jail, there is still a possibility that he could get off, that he could be found not guilty. That is the part that creates quite a bit of frustration. Last thing I'll say, Pastor, I don't know if you want to add or share or say anything. I've been intrigued by the number of people who have, have invoked Dr. Martin Luther King's name and quotes in the context of the conversation around the looting and, and the protest. And not even about the looting so much, because again, we condemn that, we don't endorse that. But the protesting in particular, the irony of using Dr. King's name and spirit and language in the protest is that he was murdered for fighting the system yeah. of why the protest is even in, the, in, in there in the first place. He was murdered. So you're using the quote of a man who was a martyr for the cause that people are protesting. The irony of all of that is really interesting to me. So I, I'll stop there. I don't, I don't know if there's what you want to add. or Yeah, well, I would just say, of course, you know, our hearts have been heavy all week because of all the racial issues and injustice that we've seen. Um, yeah, I'll flip this one back to me. <laughs> um, our hearts have been heavy. So first and foremost... I mean, that's what we spoke about today in the service and talking about how black lives count, black lives matter. And of course, then, you know, so many other people will say, well, all lives matter. Duh, <laughs> we know that. But obviously right now, from what we're seeing so many times, black lives seem to not matter as much to a lot of people. So uh, I've said this many times before, Although, you know, we may not always condone everything that that, uh, that that movement does, the message behind it, man, I get it, we get it. So black lives count. And so first and foremost, we, that's what we talked about today. If you didn't watch the message, you could go back and watch it. I preached from in front of the courthouse. Um, I think the police are getting ready to ask us to leave. And so, uh, so anyways, uh, there's a lot of noise out here right now fire trucks are coming and whatnot so I'll wait till that passes it's super loud
so like like Pastor Christopher said, just echoing like, man, there's a there's a there's a time to protest, and most of the protests yesterday were peaceful. Um, it wasn't until late in the day that things started to get violent, and so my heart is is heavy on on both things. I mean, I, I definitely understand the frustration and people venting, and like Pastor Christopher said, a lot of people don't have the tools on how to vent properly. Hold on just a second. But my heart is also heavy for uh, directly right right behind us, or right in front of us, right over there, the Saigon Bay. The Bay word isn't even on the sign anymore, but that restaurant over there is a local, locally owned restaurant that we've actually partnered with the last couple of Fridays uh, with, the, with the Innovation Partnership. And we, we created a fund where we're buying food from local restaurants to help them with their business during this pandemic as their business has been affected and then uh, we're buying the food from them directly to give them business, to keep their, uh, their workers employed, to help their business get boosted. And then we're giving the food away uh, to people that need it. And so the last couple of Fridays, we've bought hundreds of meals from Saigon Bay and they've been given away right at our parking lot at Crossover. So they've literally been a partner of ours and now, you know, looking at their, their building, it's, it's destroyed. It's gone. It's, gone. it's yeah. destroyed. So. Uh, that's what hurts, y'all. That's what really hurts. I mean, uh, some of these bigger, you know, chains that might have suffered damage, you know, many times they have insurance, they have the means to rebuild, but sometimes the local guys um, that are right here from our community, that's where it really gets hard. So uh, let me let me uh, let me kind of jump into this space really fast, and, and let me say this: um, oftentimes people will say. We need to do something, but I don't know what to do. Yeah. Uh, we need to do something. I don't know what to do. And I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you guys um, for a moment. Um, and and I'm 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 gonna take the responsibility for for us as a family to put together a list of specific things that we can do. Um, but I want to challenge challenge you all for a moment. First of all, make the commitment that you've got to do something. Make, make the commitment, you gotta do something. And, and here's the big deal. Whatever you do is gonna cost you something. It may be comfort, it may be time, it may be money, uh, it, it may be... He calls me, it's Nicole. Nicole? Yeah, it's just like, it's just like I see you standing right next hey, to Nicole. my pastor. <laughs> this is Pastor Christopher. I'm like, what? He's like, See the black guy this is funny. This guy standing behind us shirt. said, I see you out. Huh? This is who? We just oh. out here on the spot. This is called real time, y'all. This is real time TV. Real so, time hey, man, blessings to your brother. Hey, Good to talk safe. with you, Nicole. Good I'm going to get back to our live, okay? Yeah. She's like, oh, that's my pastor. One of my pastors. Right, man. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, um, I, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, change. So, um, when you make the commitment to do something, it's going to cost, cost you something. something. Might cost you followers. Might cost you I followers. Had, I had a bunch of people unfollow me this week. So what? Did you? I did. Wow. I didn't even know that, yeah, man. About 20. Not, it wasn't anything crazy. Yeah. It's I, I, good. I wanna, like it. <laughs> Peace. Yeah. I, I want to I challenge you, right? Here's, here's the last thing. Do your, do your level best as an individual to get as educated as you can about the various his, historical realities, the systemic realities, and more importantly, ask questions. Ask questions of people that are different than you. Ask questions of people that have different realities than you. Because if you put yourself in the seat of a learner, you're going to learn something new and you're gonna learn something different, okay? You're going to learn something new and you're going to learn something different, right? Um, I put a quote up on my Facebook wall today that said that racism is not a difference of opinion, right? It's not. You, you can make this a, an opinion issue. You can make this a political issue. But what you can't do is you cannot not make this a, a biblical issue. It is absolutely clearly a biblical issue. It's not a liberal uh, issue. It's a biblical issue. 
It is, it is the message of God, it is the kingdom of God. And until every Christian, every Christ bearing person makes the commitment to be involved in the change. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get real raw here just for a minute, crossover family. Don't use the scapegoat that you're doing enough by just being a member of a multi-ethnic church. Yeah. That's not enough. That's good. God calls us to, to be salt and light and to bring change even outside of our space in the church. So just saying you're a member of Crossover, we love you, we're glad to have you, but just saying you're a member of Crossover is no longer gonna be enough. You gotta make a commitment to do something. Do something, and we're gonna help you with that. We're gonna help you with it. So we're gonna pray, y'all. I'm gonna take a moment and pray, and uh, pray for our city, pray for our nation, pray for our world. And uh, pray for all the people that are being impacted by this on, on so many different levels. And then I think on top of all of this, obviously, there's just even a, a, a different level of frustration because we've been in this pandemic. And a lot of people have already been affected by losing their jobs or just being stuck in the house. And so there's, there's a whole nother level of frustration that kind of just magnifies this, I think, a little bit more. And injustice has been happening uh, forever. And it's... So let's, so let's pray. Hold on, Pastor, before you yeah. pray, one more thing. I'm sorry. Crossover family, if, if you, if you um, at any point over the next couple of days or weeks decide to join in on the protests, not the looting, but the protesting, I just want to invite you guys, please be safe. Just wanted to say that before we pray. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we come before you today right out here in this parking lot, right here in our neighborhood, uptown Tampa, north Tampa, right by the mall. And Father, we just pray for your peace. God, I think uh, there's even those moments where it says we may not even know exactly what to pray or what to say, God, but, but you know our hearts, you know what we need right now. Our hearts are heavy. They're full of all kinds of different emotions right now. And God, I pray for every person that is watching this right now. We all have a voice. We all have a platform. We all have a way we can speak out against injustice and also do it in a way that, that is healthy and productive. And so, Father, we uh, pray for every person that's watching this. Pray for every city that's going through unrest right now as well. And, God, we pray for the systems to change, first and foremost. That's what we pray for today. That's what we preached on today, that, God, we will see uh, the church rise up and speak against prejudice and follow the, the text of, of James chapter 2 where we don't favor certain people over, the, over others and where certain lives don't count more than other people's lives and uh, so Father we, we lift that up first and foremost and we pray that the church and the church is not just a building because we haven't even been meeting in a building but the church is a group of people and we're together on a mission and Jesus and justice they go together hmm. and Jesus is our mission the gospel is our mission and justice is connected to that equality is connected to that the gospel is for everyone not just for people of a certain background or skin color or economic bracket or but it's for everyone god and so father we pray uh we pray even for this community god right now for our neighborhood we pray for the people that have been impacted by even what happened last night uh, these business owners um, that, that have lost everything god we pray that uh things will get rebuilt and them. Father, we pray that uh, you'll give us wisdom as a church yes, on how we can help with the rebuilding, how we can uh, be a lighthouse, how we can bring peace, how we can be a place, a safe place, God, where people can come and vent their frustrations and see a diverse church that together, God, is standing on your word. And so we lift all these things up before you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Really quickly, guys, we're going to be back on here right after the next service starts, uh, but really fast. We've got our city uh, councilman you? here. How are you guys? Uh, most recently was the chairman of the city council, Hi. Uh, Louis Vieira, a uh, great friend of Pastor Tommy and ours and great friend of our city. Uh, we're live on Facebook oh, with great. the church. Yeah, uh, hey, guys. And Instagram. And Instagram. Hey, guys. Uh, 100 plus or so people that's watching us right after our first service ended. So I don't know if there's anything you want yeah, to say hey, or guys, add. Yeah, guys, just... You know, it's a tough time. There's a lot of hurt out there right now, but what you see out here with people out here praying, with people out here giving back to the community, this, like I tell people, this is the real Tampa. This is the real church. 
that's what the church is here for, is to make wrongs right, to heal wounds, and as the book of Isaiah says, to repair the breach. Yeah. And that's what we're here to do. Yeah. God bless you guys. So I just want to I want to thank you because this is not a photo op for you in that no, sense. No. Yeah. Uh, he's he, passionate about this Man, stuff. he's passionate about us. As a matter of fact, he and I are working together with uh, 10 or so other people uh, on a, a lynching marker for the city. And uh, we could talk about that some other time. But uh, he reaches out to us regularly when there's not a crisis, uh, when there's not a, not a platform, when there are no mics and cameras and all that around. So, uh, guys, we're gonna... Oh, wow. Okay. So we got we got our work cut out for us. And, uh, yeah, so Pastor Tommy and I, we're going to be back right back here, Facebook Live. Y'all join in with us. What time is it? It's, uh, it's uh, almost 11.30. 11.30. So next 11, service starts in 15 11.45 minutes. 11.45 service is getting ready to start actually in about this a little less than 15 minutes. So yeah. we, uh, we'll be back on live again after the 11.45 service. So probably around 12.45 or so. Yeah. If y'all put comments in there, we'll, I'll go back and watch them. We can't, I can't see them right now. So I apologize for that. Uh, Pastor Tommy and I couldn't, couldn't read them, but we'll go back and look at them. If you guys said anything that we need to respond back to, we'll, we'll get a chance to do that. Love you guys. Uh, if you have time to jump back on at the end of the 11.45 service, come on back on with us. We're going, we're going to talk some more. We're going to talk it through. All right. Love you guys. Peace. Love you guys. Peace. How are you?